Hello, this is Ruth Ann. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing a video today on the perfumes I've been wearing a lot lately. Of course, it's December, it's winter. In the area of the country I live in, it's been unseasonably warm, but yet we've got the full coziness of the season, right? So that's the kind of fragrances I've been wearing. I don't really go by season. I go more by mood. And what I feel like for that day. And I'll do everything from freshies, florals, to greens, to warm spices. But I would say that this grouping is probably more in the warm spicy category. So I'm not going to waste your time. I'm just going to get started. First off, I have Charlie Blue. This is a fragrance that's been around since the 70s. It is a flanker from the original Charlie, which I have a bottle of right here. And I'm just going to compare these a little bit. So if you're familiar at all with Charlie, it's a quintessential, probably the number one fragrance from the 70s in terms of cheaper, more affordable fragrance. I love them both. I've got to admit that it took me a little time to get used to wearing Charlie Blue. And so I'm just going to get started with uh, comparing them, uh, comparison of the two. So Charlie is really a uh, amber, slightly spicy, warm, musky fragrance, okay? So there are floral notes in it. It does not smell floral, not at all to my nose. This really is just a warm, beautiful, but heavy, perfumey amber. Almost leans a little bit creamy, butterscotchy, but imagine butterscotch and caramel. Well, no, not caramel, butterscotch. Imagine butterscotch without the sweetness. And that's how I find Charlie to be. Now, Charlie Blue is take everything warm and creamy out of Charlie and, and amp up the green notes, woody notes, harsher sandalwood. Okay, that's Charlie Blue. It's almost a little smoky. And by smoky, I mean cigarette smoky. This is not um, by the fireplace. It's not the uh, kind of fragrance that you would, you know, the scent anyway of the smokiness is not like a bonfire. It's more cigarette smoke. And I'd say only a touch of it. And I'm not quite certain if it's the perfume or if it's me. I'm just going to briefly tell you why in the 70s, I was born in the late 60s, so I was a child in the 70s. Charlie was, in my neighborhood, the number one fragrance. All the mothers wore Charlie. And I think Charlie Blue came out because women were craving something a little harder, harsher, and stronger. And that's exactly what Charlie Blue is. And so um, one, of the, one of the reasons for... The popularity of this fragrance number one was Revlon had this massive campaign but it also was just really popular it was the scent of the day it was affordable it was something that everyone could wear and it covered up cigarette smoke and I grew up in a home where my father was a smoker I spent a lot of days and times in my friends homes and in my neighbors homes and they all smoked the parents did and so Charlie and cigarette smoke, to me, in my mind, go hand in hand. And so I really don't get the cigarette smoke with Charlie, but I get that sense with Charlie Blue. And I don't know how many moms were wearing Charlie versus Charlie Blue because they were both out, I think, about the same year. But nowadays, Charlie Blue is actually more popular. It's easy to find. It's very inexpensive. You can get this under $10 on eBay easy for a full 100 mil, and it'll last six, seven, eight hours. I have no idea why it's so inexpensive. Probably because it's not all that popular, right? The price is what people demand, what the demand brings, and the demand for these is not very high. However, they're still manufactured, still sold. People must still be wearing them. Um, so anyway, regular Charlie is really only available in these small bottles, this is, uh, I don't even know, 50, 100 mil, probably 100 mil. This is 300 mil. I've never seen Charlie Blue in a smaller bottle, and I don't, I don't have an explanation for that. 
but I haven't, I've been wearing them both, but this more. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> this, believe it or not, is a compliment getter. Now, most people, if you were to buy this and, and, and you've never worn, you're not into uh, vintage fragrance, you're going to think, whoa, how could anyone wear it? In fact, the first time I bought it and wore it, I thought, whoa, how could anyone wear this? But it grows on you. Give it a little time. If you're a little adventurous, this will grow on you. So the other day I was wearing it, I sprayed it on out of the bathtub and my husband came home from work and he said, what is that smell, that beautiful fragrance that's everywhere in the apartment? And he said, "I it's just, I, it smells like Hollywood in here. And I've gotten compliments on this when we've been out for date nights. I've gotten compliments from this fragrance in elevators and people are shocked when I say, hey, it's Charlie. It's good old Charlie from the 70s. That's usually my response. And people just open mouth staring, can't believe it. <clears throat> so anyway, I don't want to go on and on about one fragrance, but my love for this fragrance just never dies. It never gets old. For me, I tend to wear this more, both of them actually, fall and winter. And then there's Charlie White and Charlie Red. I tend to wear those in the summer. So highly recommend, you got to be a little adventurous, but it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Next up, I have another classic. This is Taboo. This fragrance actually comes from the 1930s. There's a lot of videos about it on YouTube. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's popular, but in terms of the real old vintage ones, this is an affordable that's still loved and used today. It's sold probably in every Walmart, every Walgreens. So obviously people are still buying it. And I believe it's also very popular in Asia. This has often been compared to root beer. And I have a custom hair product that I buy on Etsy. It's a, a woman who does um, homemade, beautiful organic hair conditioners, leave-in conditioners. And I bought one that's scented as root beer, specifically to go with Taboo to wear in the winter. And they both do smell quite similar. Taboo is a little bit more spicy than root beer. It's maybe more Dr. Pepper. It's like if Dr. Pepper and root beer had a baby, it would smell kind of like Taboo. It's a very perfumey perfume. It's very vintage, but it's gorgeous. This is also a big attention getter, gets a lot of uh, compliments when I wear it. People comment on it because it is so unique. It also projects really well. It's strong and it lasts a long time. Now, this is not as strong as it was back when my friends were wearing it in the 70s and 80s, but it's still nice and strong. It's still a beautiful formulation. Um, I have, this is a 100 ml bottle. I have bought the, I don't know if it was a 50, a smaller bottle, 50 or 100 ml bottle. Those are available as well. And I find that those are different formulations and they're a little stronger than these 100 mils. So anyway, that's just a little FYI. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, never want to be without Taboo. All right. We're getting away from vintage now. We're moving into something very modern. This has made a big splash in the perfume community. Um, and this is called French Coffee. And this is by Al Rehab, which is a discount... Uh, Arabian, Middle Eastern perfume house. I'm not going to go on and on about it because it's so popular. I did buy three bottles. This is what the box looks like. So it's called French Coffee. Here it says Crown Perfumes, but it's Crown Perfumes and then it's by Al Rehab. So these are very inexpensive. Like I said, I bought three at the same time and I don't remember what the price was, but it was reasonable. These are 1 point, 50 ml bottles, sorry. I was going to 1.65 or 85 ounces. Okay, so this does smell like coffee. However, it's not pure coffee. This is not a black coffee. This is not brewed coffee that you make at home. This is the kind of coffee you get when you go to Starbucks or Caribou or wherever you get your coffees and you get a sweetened mocha or a caramel mocha hazelnut something or other. 
I don't drink those drinks, but I sure do know what they smell like. And this is what that smells like. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. If you love that smell of that sweet coffee when you buy it and you're drinking it in your car, or maybe they're making it and you smell it when you enter the coffee shop, that's what this smells like. And it's beautiful. So there's a chocolatiness to it, but there's also a bit of a hazelnut and a lot of coffee. It's 50% coffee. 50% sweet, uh, absolutely gorgeous. And I can't imagine anyone disliking it unless you don't like coffee. So I highly recommend, really, really beautiful. Next up, I have something completely different. This is a perfume by Elizabeth Arden. And typically I wear this in the summer. This is called Splendor. And I suspect it may be discontinued because now it's available on eBay for a very low price. I think I picked up two bottles. They were about $17 each. This is um, a large bottle. I want to say this is four fluid ounces. And it's really an old school floral. Even though it's a modern, made in modern times, it really smells old school. And the reason for that is it's a heavy dose of hyacinth. It's a white floral. It's got lily of the valley, iris, but it's mostly hyacinth. And I have a memory of looking up the notes on Splendor, this fragrance, not too long ago. And, and I could be wrong about this, but it seems to me like there was no actual hyacinth as a note. And I could be wrong. So if you know this please leave it in the comments to correct me because I'm interested and I'm, I can't be bothered to look it up because I don't have time. But anyway, if you like hyacinth, you like old school perfumes, hyacinth is really an old world floral. Very popular, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Hyacinth was super popular. Now, I love actual the actual flowers of hyacinth. I like hyacinth candles. It's one of my favorites, but I also recognize that it's a powdery, old school, old world floral. That's not for everyone. So what I'm going to say about this is it lasts a good six hours. Beautiful, powdery hyacinth. If you like those kinds of fragrances, I guarantee you will love Splendor. Not very expensive, lasts really well. I'm telling you, if hyacinth, if these grandma old school Florence, Flor, uh, fragrances sorry, were popular today, this would be a $100 bottle, okay, it, because it's just that good. Really well blended, gorgeous fragrance. And then I have one more. This is a Middle Eastern fragrance. This is called Oud 24 Hours, and I believe it's by Latafa. This is an Eau de Parfum. If I'm wrong about Latafa, I will have the, um, the actual manufacturer in the um, down box below in the, in the description. So this is a dupe for Tom Ford's Black Orchid. And I love the scent of Black Orchid. Absolutely, I don't mean the flower, I mean the fragrance, the perfume. But there's no way I'm paying that price for it. It's a hyped up perfume. It's very popular. It's very expensive. It's in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And there's no way I spend that kind of money on a bottle. And I would never even ask for it for a gift. But this is a beautiful dupe. I had uh, watched some reviews. A lot of people were saying that this is actually better than Black Orchid because they've taken out some of the harsh, more offensive, offensive notes that some people find offensive. And they've kind of amped up the chocolate. So there's a dark chocolate in here. There's dark fruits, dark berries. It's slightly sweet. It's very mysterious, very gothic, <clears throat> very dark. This is a beautiful date night fragrance. This would be a clubbing fragrance. This is a a cozy winter fragrance. For me, because I am just a, a perfume crazy person, I'll wear this morning, noon, and night. When I go on a kick on this, I'll wear it for three or four days. It's not very expensive. It's still available. I just ordered a backup bottle, and I'm probably only this far down on this bottle. Of course, you can't see through it, but <clears throat> I can tell I still have quite a bit in here, but I just never want to be without it. 
And uh, I have some perfume oils that are dupes for black orchid. And I layer them together. And this actually does not need to be helped in its strength because it is so strong. But I love the perfume oils of Tom Ford's Black Orchid because I can travel with them. And I love to wear it in the evening. And I'll wear it year round in the evening. I'm just that weird, okay? So if you like Black Orchid, if you like dark, dark chocolate, I'm talking about dark cacao, 80% chocolate, and you like dark berries, plum, blackberry, black raspberry, uh, with just a sexiness that just will not end. If you want to wear a black turtleneck and feel mysterious while you're sipping on a cocktail, this is the fragrance that is my go-to for that. And uh, a little gothic, but definitely a black sweater fragrance. So anyway, I've gone on and on, and that's what I have to say about these fragrances, the ones I've been wearing a lot lately. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.